XAI has just come up with Grok 3. I went into LM Arena and tested the model by asking the cliche question, how many hours are there in the word strawberry? And I entered eight hours deliberately and I compared it straight away with GPT-40. In GPT-40, the answer that it came up is contains seven hours. But if we look at the response from Grok, it literally counted one hour after the other, first hour, second hour, third hour, and eventually it says in this word, there are eight hours. Wow, that's quite impressive. Let's go ahead and find out what are the different features that they have introduced in Grok 3. So this plot tells all the story. If you take OpenAI, they started in 2019 and have, they have been introducing models kind of every six months or every year, and then they have been progressing steadily. But look at Grok. They started in only 2023 and look at the speed at which they are improving the models. It's just crazy. And now they are caught up with GPT-40. This is not even Grok 3 and Grok 3 has overtaken GPT-40. So I can't wait to see what's coming up next. Needless to say, all the performance irrespective of the model, be it the GPT family of model or the Grok models, all that big intelligence requires big compute and everything comes from huge compute clusters. And it is for this reason that these guys have built a huge compute cluster and they have shown this cluster that they have built. So initially at phase one, they started with 100,000 GPUs fully training synchronously and in phase two and in just 92 days, they seem to have scaled up to 200K GPUs and that is what they use to train models like Grok3. And with that kind of compute, they are telling that Grok3 has been trained with 10x more training capacity than Grok2. So in terms of the benchmark, they benchmark on three challenges, mathematics, science, and coding. And the coding is on the lead code benchmarking. In all three of those, Grok3 and even Grok3 Mini seems to be performing better than all the competing models. Now, we may ask that, you know, we are just simply overfitting, just memorizing the entire data. For that reason, they're saying that they went ahead and tested the model in Chatbot Arena with the code name as Chocolate. And in the Chatbot Arena, Chocolate seems to have gotten 1,402. And this is the first time any model has ever crossed a score of 1,400. And this tweet comes from lmarena.ai itself. On top of that, Grok3 seems to be the number one in across all categories. So unlike the other models, which are number one in some of the categories, but number two or four in some of the categories, in terms of testing the models, they have demoed this think functionality, which seems to solve really hard problems. For example, it can generate code to to animate 3D plot to launch from Earth the landing on the Mars and then getting back to Earth at the next launch window. Let's see how the animation looks after it has generated the 3D plot. And this is the solution that the model has generated. We can see that the Earth is in blue, the Mars is in red, the spacecraft is now on Earth, it's just moving to Mars and from Mars at some point it will move to Earth for the landing and let's see there you go so it's just moving so the animation seems to be pretty seamless and it seems to work perfectly in terms of reasoning abilities they've shared the performance on three benchmarks one is in the math one is in science and the other one is in coding which is obviously to do with the lead code problems and they've also shared the different shadings indicating that when we have two shades it just means that it's doing a test time compute so if you give it more compute budget during test time and grok seems to overtake all of the models it is competing with, including OpenAI's O1, DeepSeek R1, and Gemini 2 Flash Thinking. So it is leading in all these benchmarks right now. Because AI ME 2025 is just introduced, they benchmark these models on AI ME 2025. And even on that, they notice that Grok3 seems to perform way better than the competing models. And this indicates that it's actually not overfitting any of the data set and it's actually a generalized performance. So one of the key elements of the model that they're saying is its ability to come up with innovative solutions. For example, if you want a combination of Tetris and Bijewell, then the model is able to think creatively and combine the two and then come up with a game that works. And they've also introduced a new feature, which is called the Big Brain, in order to do all these things. And this is the solution that the model has come up with. We can see that the different colors correspond to the Bijewell game. At the same time, it's more like bricks falling down in gravity, similar to the Tetris game. So it has come up with a game that's a fusion of both and it's playable. They've also introduced a new feature called deep search where you know if you ask a question the model goes ahead and searches the internet for example that's looked into 29 web pages and 30 x posts and then it's coming up with all this data which is really doing a 
deep search. Okay, what is coming up next? So they've now introduced Grok3 and it also has reasoning capability. And so they're saying that the next frontier is that of agents where the model behaves more like humans with all these powerful tools. It can go ahead and do whatever it wants on the internet with all the different tools that it is equipped with. So all of that is going to be available on grok.com, which is coming soon. At the moment, if we visit grok.com, we're just going to see coming soon, but they are going to launch it here and they're most powerful models with all the capabilities will always be available in grog.com in the future but for now they're still working on releasing the most powerful model yet that of grog3 so i'm signing off with this and i will see you in my next video take care